my uh, friend Teolia has uh, a really good video on um, the, uh, late, uh, the most recent Toronto Pride Parade, <clears throat> uh, where she talks a little bit about the inclusion of, uh, of, a, of uh, trans people in the Pride Parade, and um, um, you know it's it's one of those subjects that. Uh, like you were talking about, uh, Teolia, that really kind of gets under people's skin for some reason. Um, I'm not really sure why. Um, I guess I'm just lucky in that, like, for whatever reason, it's not seemed like a challenge. Um, the idea of transgendered people. I mean. <clears throat> I don't, I don't personally know anybody that's uh, trans, but I've met trans people over the years and, uh, you know, while I've not, you know, got any personal friends that are trans, I mean, it just doesn't seem that hard of a, a concept to get your head around. Um, personally, I, I think I, I feel like a, kind of uh, spiritual connection on some level to trans people because of the way how hard it must be to, to find your way to that conclusion for you to be surrounded by people who all dress a certain way and who all act a certain way and for you to feel this pressure to conform to that, because that's what you're supposed to be, and for you to find your way to something so radically different, um, to me, just seems really insightful and brave. And that's how I would, I would describe the trans movement, you know, uh, just in very general terms, I just think it's, <clears throat> it shows great insight and great bravery to be that honest with everyone around you to say, this is me, this is who, who I am, even though it doesn't necessarily fit with your preconception or society's preconception, um, this is, this is me, you know, that takes guts, and uh, I really respect that. I think that everyone is, should be on a journey of self-discovery, trying to understand themselves, trying to understand where they are, the universe they find themselves in, what does it mean for them, and um, it's one of the reasons why, you know, I've, I, I've been in discussions with people from time to time. Uh, feminists who will say, you know, this is really putting back, you know, setting back, you know, women's uh, uh, issues, um, you know, I think the guy at the end of your video, Teolia, said it best, I mean, don't be mean, and if you've got any privilege, use it generally, or generously. Um, it's really all, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, um, I remember there was some video that, uh, that Prof MTH did, um, it was, you know, he, he does a lot of really good videos, but, um, there's one video in particular he was doing about, um, the constitutionality of something, and, uh, I, I left a comment on his page basically saying, you know, my rule of thumb is, that if you're using the law to persecute the weak, you're doing it wrong. To which he said, you know, basically, yeah, I agree with that sentiment broadly. And I think that's, that's the thing. I mean, if you've got power over somebody, if you've got an advantage, you know, be aware of it. Don't be a dick. Um, 
That's a totally a, another subject, but that's an interesting one as well, the idea of what the law is for. I believe the law is, exists as a remedy for the powerless. Otherwise, what's the point? Powerful people don't need the protection of law. You know what I mean? I mean, in other words, like, you know, let's suppose superheroes were real and Superman existed. You know what I mean? He wouldn't need a legal system. He could just crush whatever was in his way. Um, the law exists to protect the weak. If it doesn't, then I don't know what purpose it serves. If it's just there to mitigate between, you know, powerful people and, you know, to be used as a way of justifying uh, uh, harsh recrimination against the weak, then I don't I don't know what its purpose is. Because you don't you don't need the law for that. The law is a remedy against helplessness, against injustice. Um, you know, it's like that old saying that, you know, you remember the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Well that's true to a certain extent so yeah I mean the law should be there for for the weak for, for the powerless and, and uh, when it comes to things like gender or sexual identity I think it's incumbent on on those of us who uh, are in the majority and and, and uh, have the privilege of everyone you know giving us the uh, thumbs up the default like uh, green light to just you know, say, hey, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna go buy a rainbow flag and I'm gonna put it out in front of my house. I wonder how long it's gonna take for <laughs> for that to turn out poorly. But no, I mean, I think I will. I think I'm gonna put a rainbow flag out in front of my house. It's complicated, man. You know, you grew up in the South. I mean, I love it here in a lot of ways. Um, I love the culture of the South. Um, the music, the heritage, and everything, but uh, not terribly inclusive. Not exactly as uh, as open-minded in a lot of ways as, say, Toronto. But, uh, but damn it, I think it's worth worth fighting for. I think you can have. I think you can have. You know, the good, and you can weed out the bad, and, and you can still have things. You know that. That's, that's the thing, that's what it is about being human, is that you recognize, even inside of somebody who's done a lot of bad things, you can recognize some good. And uh, that's how I feel about sometimes, you know, the South, you know. There's a lot of problems, and there's a lot of, you know, recalcitrance on the part of some of the population, but I think the good will win out. I've got hope. If you don't have hope, what do you got? So I'm going to see if I can go find a rainbow flag to put out in front of my house. Don't be mean. Don't be mean.